Good morning. Kasha Kelly looks rough. I literally flew all night long. And so we just got off a plane about an hour ago. So forgive me for not looking any better than what I do today, but hey, I'm here. So that's good. That's a good thing. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, you beauties, as you sign on. Dawn, good morning. Darlene Jenkins, good morning. Rachel Murray, good morning. Karen D, good morning. Good morning, ladies. Melina, good morning. I saw so many of you this weekend. I love you, ladies. Ashley, good morning. Stacy Larson, good morning. Jeanette Ball, good morning. Kim, Kimmy, good morning. Donna Brown, good morning. Faithful Donna. Fawn Welch, good morning. Stacy Gilbreth, Powell, good morning. Good morning, you ladies. Charlotte Johnson, good morning. Charlotte, yeah, Charlotte Johnson. Wendy, good morning. You ladies are amazing. Kelly Kuntz, good morning. Melina, good morning. Good morning, ladies. Good morning to prayer. We had a fantastic, well, it was just a life-altering uh, meeting in uh, Portland with the Her Voice National Gathering. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. The power of God was there. The glory of the Lord descended on the place. Healings, deliverances. People got delivered. People got healed set free. We're going to have a whole list of new um, Her Voice events across America. So I want you to pick one close to you and begin to invite people to come. Good morning, ladies. Um, we're going to have our crowned conference. We're kicking off the new year with our crown conference. And uh, that is going to be the third week in January. We have a special going right now that's going to last for about two months. If you get your crown ticket and your 2022 National Her Voice uh, ticket, and I will have those up on my events before the end of the day. I'll have that up. It'll probably take me a few uh, a few hours because Pastor Kelly just got in town. And I'm gonna sleep a little bit before I go up to the office, but we will have those events up on my event page before the day's end. If you sign up for both conferences, you're gonna get an early, early bird, which it's a really discounted price for both. And then you're also gonna get six months, once a month, one hour a month, me and J Jenny and I will be mentoring those that uh, take advantage of the early, early bird on both, for both conferences. It's about $300 which is really cheap because each conference is going to include some food and it's just going to be unbelievable. When I tell you that our Her Voice National Gathering, I mean, there was 800 plus women there and lives were radically changed. We're on a mission, ladies. We're on a mission to gather women across this nation. We gather them so that they can encounter Jesus. And then we have our second mission is to equip them through these drenches and through uh, conferences that we will be holding uh, in Portland. We will equip them for discipleship. And then last but not least, we are sending you into the harvest to go and preach the gospel and gather more women. And I just want to encourage you, we are going by the help and grace of God gather a million women in prayer every day by the help and grace of God we're going to walk on that Washington mall and we're going to we're going to by the by the spirit of God we're going to see Roe versus Wade turn, turned over and we're going to see a lot a lot of amazing change in America because women because there were some women that were willing to pray fast and stand up for what we believe. Stand up for what we believe. Stand up for the Bible. Stand up for what is right. And so I'm excited to be a part of this, and I know you are too. I love you so much. I want to give you some uh, words of encouragement today. 
uh, about prayer. I want to give you some words of encouragement, and then I want to pray. One of the foundational revelations that Pastor Callie came to terms with. Um, let me get a second. Let me get something. I need something else to sit on. I'm short. I'm, I got short problems. Okay. One of the foundational revelations that I came to terms with was that why I needed to pray, why it was so important that I pray every day, and that was just because I can't do a Christian life by myself. It's just as simple as I can't do this by myself. I, I can do a lot of things. I've got some gift, but to live the Christian life the way God has called us to live it, I need supernatural help. And so when I came to terms with it, I can't do this by myself, it became so much easier for, and so much, uh, I had a lot of motivation to spend time with Jesus every day um, and to take communion with him because I knew I needed his strength for me to be able to overcome the enemy, for me to be able to hear the voice of God, for me to be able to um, do the, the, uh, the things that God had called me to do, for me to walk in a kingdom lifestyle. You know, that's what happens when we pray. We're able to walk in a supernatural kingdom lifestyle. Another revelation that I came to terms with many years ago is to follow the Lord, you have to make a choice to be second. If you're going to follow the Lord, you have to make a choice to be second. Holy Spirit becomes first. Jesus is the Lord of your life. And you make a choice that it's not my will, but it's God's will. And that is what's going to rule my life. And that is what's going to lead my life. I'm going to be second and God is going to be first. I'm going to submit my will and my life to the Father. And I'm going to ask Jesus to be Lord over everything. We build a kingdom life by living in a kingdom space. And you can only live in a kingdom space through prayer and intimacy. Living in a kingdom space. So you're able to live in the natural life, but also access the kingdom life because we seek God every day. Everyone wants miracles. Everyone wants signs and wonders. Everyone wants God to do all kinds of extraordinary things in their life. But what it takes is me making a decision to enter into his presence every day and to hear his voice and to draw nigh to him and to spend time with him. And then I begin to start hearing the words of the Father. I, begin, I get instruction from Holy Spirit. I'm able to make incredible kingdom decisions because I can hear the voice of the Lord. So Lord, I just thank you that you are drawing us, even, even the drawing of the Lord, even our desire for the Lord comes from the Lord. We can't do it on our own. Even our desire for God, it's because of his goodness that we even desire him and his love. I want to read some scriptures over you today, and then we're going to pray them. Philippians 4 and 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and petition, in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So, Lord, we repent of all anxiousness. We repent of all fear. We repent of anything that would cause us to not trust you the way we should trust you. And, God, I just ask you that you just go before us and you make every crooked place straight. You help us to make good, godly, powerful, Holy Ghost-filled decisions today. Help us to make Holy Ghost-filled decisions today. Ladies, I want you to go in and share the broadcast. I'm going to read uh, James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. It is very important that when we get in the presence of God, that we take the time. Listen, I'm not, I'm not in fear of going to hell. I know I'm saved. But you know what? If I do something wrong to my husband, I'm going to tell him I'm sorry. And if I do something that grieves the Lord, I'm going to repent. I'm going to repent. 
So, Lord, I just ask you to give us a repentant heart every day. Help us to be real sensitive to your spirit. And when I do things that grieve you or, or you know, grieve myself or grieve my family member, God, I want to be quick to say I'm sorry. But I want to be quick to acknowledge anything in my life that needs your blood to just wash over it, that needs your power. When I need kingdom thinking in an area, I want to be quick to repent so that you can exchange it with your thoughts and your ways. 1 John 1 and 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that comforting? Jeremiah 29 and 12, Thou will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Lord, I just thank you that you're a God that hears these handmaidens' prayers. The Lord is saying to you, he hears your prayers. So I want you right now to take some time and ask God right now, what are you saying? What, are you, what do you want to talk about, God? What do you want to talk about in my life? What do you want to talk about to me? And then you talk back to, this, to the Lord because the Lord hears your prayers. Lord, we just ask you today, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? Where do you want to lead us today in prayer? Where do you want to lead us today? You said that if we, if we come before you, that you're faithful and just to answer. And we trust you, Lord. But we want to learn to tap in to what the Spirit is saying every day when we pray. Lord, we thank you for our children. Talk to us about our children. We thank you for our churches. Talk to us about our church. We thank you for our husbands. Talk to us about our husband. We thank you, Lord, about her, for her voice. Talk to us about a nation that you're turning in the direction of the greatest revival we've ever seen in the history of mankind. Talk to us, Father. Talk to us about the sacrifice. Talk to us about the love. God, let love flow and grow in us exponentially. Let us be women of great love. Let us be women of great love. I'm encouraging you ladies to share the broadcast and ask others to pray with us. Here's one of my scriptures that I absolutely love. It's Jeremiah 33 and 3. He says, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Do you know when we pray, God gives us kingdom secrets? He gives us secrets, secrets for the natural life, Secrets for the supernatural life, secrets in heaven. He reveals his secrets. So, Lord, I just thank you that for 222 women this morning, you are going to reveal their secrets. You're going to reveal secrets to them. You're going to reveal secrets. Secrets that you're going to give them. Secrets about the kingdom. Secrets about their family. Secrets about your plans. Secrets about business ideas and inventions. God, you have so many kingdom secrets that you are just waiting to give us and reveal to us if we just spend time in your presence. It's not just me praying and begging you to move. I don't beg you. You are my father. I simply ask you to move in my life. I simply ask you to heal my children. I simply ask you to give me the kingdom secrets. You give me kingdom secrets because I search for you. Luke 27 and 28. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. God, let us be women that pray for those that mistreat us. That really, that separates the men from the boys. Because we are called to forgive. This whole gospel is built on forgiveness. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have ever
everlasting life. So he forgave us and sent his son. And so he's saying to us, he says, I want you to forgive. I want you to extend forgiveness. When you pray, extend forgiveness. Extend give forgiveness to those who have hurt you or beguiled you or, or done something that's evil to you. Ask the Lord to give you a heart of forgiveness. Psalms 18 and 6. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. For his temple, from his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him unto his ears. Lord, I just thank you that every time I've ever been in distress, you've heard me. Every time I've ever cried out, you've come to my aid. You are a God we can depend on. And you heal us, deliver us, and set us through free. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I tell you, whatsoever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it shall be yours. God, we just believe that we are going we are seeing and are going to see all of our family saved, healed, and delivered. We're going to have family revivals across America. There's going to be 233 women, and every woman that signs on later today will begin to see massive revival in their family. And we're going to live to see our cousins, our first cousins, second cousin, third cousins, our nieces, nephews, our grandchildren, our children, our neighbors, our cities, our churches. People are going to walk in off the street. We're going to go to restaurants and be led by the Holy Ghost to pray for people. We're going to walk by the power of the Holy Ghost and see revival that is mind-blowing in our families. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstance, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So, Lord, I just thank you that we're just, we rejoice today in your goodness. We rejoice today in your love. We rejoice today for what you did this weekend uh, at the Her Voice National Gathering. Lord, I just want to take the time to celebrate today what you did. What, what you did was miraculous in the lives of your handmaidens. I want to celebrate 237 women today that are praying and seeking God. I celebrate these women. I want to celebrate the men and the volunteers that helped us with this conference. I want to celebrate the speakers and the people that added in any way to blessing God's people. I want to celebrate these women that are faithful to get up every day and seek your face while you may be found, God, and believe you for the greatest revival we've ever seen, I want to celebrate you, Father. You are a good, good Father. A good, good Father. I love you so much. I'm so excited about what Jesus is doing. Remember, doubleup.fun. Uh, you can go there, doubleup.fun. Doubleup.fun. Sign up for both conferences. Our Crown Conference that's going to be in January here in Houston. And then our 2022 National Gathering for uh, Her Voice. You can also see all of the... Um, we've, you can go to hervoice.com and see all of the uh, Her Voice events that we have scheduled. Our next one is in Kentucky in August. So all those in Kentucky, please rally and get there. I'm telling you, God is doing something. He's called us to gather and to encounter, he's called us to gather women so that they can encounter Jesus. He's called us to equip them so that they can be discipled. And he's called us to send them into the harvest. We have got a lot of work to do, ladies. But you are more than able. You are well equipped to go and to win the lost. And we're going to see great and mighty exploits. Great and mighty exploits. Great and mighty exploits. There are several of you that are going to be healed today. They're gonna to be healed today. And I saw God healing uh, migraines, especially today. There are those that are on this broadcast that uh, you may even have a migraine right now, but God is healing you right now of a migraine. Right now, right now. 
right now. There's somebody on this broadcast that has not been able to eat correctly for months. Your stomach and your uh, digestive system has just been so uh, upside down. You've been to the doctor several times. You've, you just have no desire to eat. And when you do eat, you have problems. From this point on, you are being healed. God is healing, touching your stomach, touching your digestive area. In fact, before this broadcast is over, you're going to go eat a meal and feel really hungry. You're going to keep it down and you're going to have no problem. God is healing your digestive system by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, right now, if that is you, please, please reach out to me. I love it when I hear uh, the stories of people being healed and delivered and set free. Um, there's also a woman here that's been praying for uh, your oldest son. I heard your eldest son, and he has strayed from the Lord for a long time. But God has been moving on him, and you even sense it by the way he's talking to you. And I'm telling you, he's going to come back to God in power and in might, and God is going to use him really greatly in this last day revival. You will see the salvation of the Lord for your children. And so, Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing. My husband's going to step up, and he is going to, he's tired too. He's over there sleeping a little bit while I'm praying. He's going to lead us in uh, communion today, and then we're going to sign off, and we're going to take a nap because we're tired. We were up all night. We drove, We flew all night long from Portland, so we're feeling a little tired this morning. But I love you. I honor you for your faithfulness. I declare the blessing of the Lord over you. My husband's going to step in and we're going to do communion. God bless. Get your grape juice and your cracker or whatever you have. I'm going to read the scripture. And 1 Corinthians 11:23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed. He took bread, and he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this and remember to me. So we take this, Lord, and we remember your body, substituted for our body, that we might receive healing as well in our body. Receive our healing right now. Receive your healing. Thank you, Jesus for divine health. Thank you for every sickness has to go. In Jesus' name, we speak healing over everyone. And we declare the body and the blood of Jesus. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And whoever does this proclaims the Lord's death until he comes. We thank you for your blood your precious blood that washes and cleanses us from all sin, puts us into the new covenant. It's the power of the covenant that you made between us by your own blood, by the blood of Jesus. You took upon our sins, took upon our sicknesses, took upon our iniquities, our fears, our unbelief, paid it all, and it was done. And so we remember his, his um, death, but we remember that we died with him I have been crucified with Christ, Galatians 2.20. Nevertheless, I live, but it's no longer I who live. It's Christ in me. So there's new creation, uh, First Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians 5.17, or is it Second Corinthians 5.17? It says, Ever, we're new creations in Christ Jesus. So we died with him. He was our substitutional sacrifice. He represented us, so it was just as if we were there. So we died with him. We were on the we were put on the cross. We were buried with him. It just says he was resurrected. We are resurrected to new life. That's what when you baptize, it symbolizes going under the water, dying to your old life, coming out a new creation. And then let's not forget we were resurrected and ascended to to the heavenly places. Ephesians tells us that we sit together with him in heavenly places. So we've now been connected with him. We were disconnected, now we're reconnected. And where he is, we also, he represents us as well because we're still connected. 
he's still representing us before the Father. So we have a representation for us. And so we sit together with him in heavenly places. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. We remember not just your death, but we remember our death. It was our death. Your death was our death. Your resurrection, our resurrection. Your ascension, our ascension. We have access, according to Hebrews, to the holy place, the holy of holies, where Jesus, where God is, to the throne room. It's called a throne room of grace, which is help in the time of need. That we can obtain help in the time of need. God gives you grace for when you need it. So sometimes we worry about tomorrow. We don't have grace for tomorrow. We have grace for today. And God gives you strength to do what you need for today. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can come boldly, according to Hebrews, boldly to the throne room of grace. Not, not um, casual, not ca cavalier, but bold, meaning we're not afraid to our Father. We, we, we understand we have a seat at the table. And he just said, you can come in any time to his office and say, can I talk with you, Daddy? And he's going to say, yes, you're my child. Come on in. You have a seat at my table anytime. And he will hear and he will listen to your prayers. Why? Because of what Jesus did. So we identify every time we do communion. We identify with what Jesus did. There was a union. Communion means common union or, or communion. It means an intimate union. That we and we remember that we were connected with Jesus Christ, so we're part of the family. It's an awesome thing. We remember it by by doing this communion. It constantly reinforce the fact that we are forgiven, that we are accepted, we are as dearly loved children now. We've been brought into the family of God. We were not citizens of heaven, but now we are. We were just citizens of earth, but now we're citizens of heaven. We were just sinners who needed a savior, but now we're sons and daughters. We have a spirit of adoption or acceptance. There's a spirit of acceptance, not rejection. One of the enemy's tricks is to keep us in a framework of feeling that we don't belong, feeling like we're not a part of the real family. Everyone else is. Special people are only the anointed, but you are anointed because Christ lives in you and the Holy Spirit lives in you and he is the anointing so you have the anointed one living in you so we just we stay Christ inside minded you know when you look at a, um, a box of cereal uh, you can look at the outside and it has all kinds of great advertisement and pictures but it's really what is on the inside that matters Paul said that we carry this treasure in jars of clay, meaning what we see on the outside may look plain or it may be even painted, but it's not what the treasure is. The treasure is what's on the inside, which is Jesus in me, the hope of glory. We want to see glory. We want to see God's glory moving in the earth because God's glory can fix a lot of problems, heal every disease, drive out every demon, reverse every curse uh it, it can enforce his presence can just enforce his glory and we're glory carriers but jesus in us is what causes us to be glory carriers why because paul says we are a temple of the holy spirit and he's looking back at the temple the old testament temple and what was in that temple there were sacrifices on the outside but when you went inside there was a place where the, pri the priest could go and there was the candlesticks and there was the bread and there was the um, their altar. There was a incense burning. There were several things there, but inside the inner room was the, where God was supposed to be sitting on the mercy seat, which was the Ark of the Covenant. He was sitting there and how did they know he was sitting there? The average person wouldn't have known, but th there was a cloud by day that stayed over them, and a fire by night. The high priest, though, would go in once a year for the sins of the people on the Day of Atonement. And he had to tie a bell around his foot because, and a rope so that they could hear him moving around because if he went in and didn't cover his own sins, he would die because that was supposed to be the Holy of Holies where God was sitting. And so now this Holy of Holies, when Jesus died, that veil was by not by man's hands but by God's hands symbolizing 
that now the Holy of Holies was not limited to that place. And he came and he began to live inside of us. So now we are the Holy of Holies. We have the outer court, which is our body, the inner court, which is our soul, our mind. And then we have our spirit is the Holy of Holies where Jesus and God the Father actually live and where we are connected to him. And I know that's a lot of stuff, but when we remember the communion, there's a lot more to it than just saying, thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. There's this union that was happened, supernatural union between us and God when we became uh, saved and accepted Jesus as our Savior and Lord. And we give you praise and we thank you. So I'm going to close it on out because I don't see Callie anywhere. She's gone. Think maybe she went back to bed. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to close it on that. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We pray God's grace over you. Uh, God's blessings chase you down. The Lord is your good shepherd. You shall not lack anything you need. He's going to make a table before you, even in the presence of your enemies. He's going to show you favor. And uh, his mercy and his compassion and his loving kindness is going to pursue you all the days of your life. God bless you.